Something like Spreading Seas can be really disruptive to their game plan. So many of their cards cost so many different colors. And apparently the key color to knock out is red. Is that right? Yeah. That, uh, that's what Jerry T was telling me. He's <laughs> playing, uh, he was playing uh, Spread em in Standard, which mm -hmm. is, he's got eight of these. Is he playing Convincing Mirage? He's playing Convincing Mirage. Which is just spreading seas without the cantrip? Exactly. Crazy. Uh, you know, so a bunch of uh, Cascade spells that cascade into it. <laughs> a Johnny Vengeant. Pretty, pretty nifty deck. He, he could not beat vampires, though. No, I imagine not. All right. Well, Jund untapped with a swamp and an island in play. Not exactly the way the Jund mana base is drawn up. Very fun in this but, deck, siding in uh, like Sidraxa Spectre or something. <laughs> I think uh, Wu Tong seems to have a fetch land and a Nighthawk. Does he just go get a second swamp here, or does he go get. Well, one of the nice things about the Nighthawk is, I mean, he can. It seems a little easier to cast than a Thranax, or. Especially yeah, a if people easier, are but cutting it makes him want to get a second lands. black. Like, if he has no access to green mana. Looks like he's declined the Nighthawk. He could have cracked for a swamp for Nighthawk, but he has no access to green mana, and I think he, he decided, yeah, Spreading Seas is doing really good work here. Look what it's done to this draw. And Wutong could have played Nighthawk here sure. and had red and green off the, off the crag, but instead he's, uh, he's forced to use that fetch land on a forest, it looks like. Well, it's also hard for them to blightning you without red mana. <laughs> oh, second, second fetch land off the top. That's good news. Wu so can get a black out of It's green. interesting. Wu Tong chose not, chose not to uh, crack his fetch land. He just wants to draw land. So now that he's got a different way to get green, yeah, presumably. And there's a swamp, so this is going to be a Nighthawk. It says Wu Tong up on the screen, but it's actually Tong Wu. And there's the Vampire Nighthawk. The consensus first pick in Zendikar Draft. Nighthawk? I did a draft after uh, Grand Prix Tampa with LSV where he took a Malakir Blood Witch and passed me a Nighthawk. And then after the draft, he said, I probably should have taken a Nighthawk over a Malakir Blood Witch. <laughs> Give you an idea how highly regarded that card is right now. Sure. <laughs> Pretty even match here in the team championship. China is up a game here in standard. They've split to in Extended, and Austria's up a game in Legacy. Pretty much a flat-footed tie right now. Best two out of three matches wins the World Team Championship. We need to figure out split-screen technology for the webcast for next year's Worlds. There's so much action going on on all these different screens. I keep seeing dark rituals out of the corner of my eye. Yeah. Lu looks over. Yeah, the lack of red mana really pinching this draw from Tong Wu. He's got uh, Blightning in his hand, he's got a Thrynax in his hand, he's got a pair of Blood Braids in his hand. And he can't cast any of them. And, and what it's done is it's given Benedict Clouser the opportunity to have his mana untapped and yeah. be able to react, which is what he wants to do. Totally agree. To the spells in... Uh, yeah, it's, it's the anti john technology on display. Maelstrom Pulse off the top. Well, <laughs> is he going to cast it? Is he going to Maelstrom Pulse the uh, Oh, the Spreading Seas? Totally. <laughs> totally Maelstrom's pace. Maelstrom Pulse Spreading Seas here, right? What else is he going to do? He's got no other spell he can cast. And he's, he's, he's really been missing his red mana.
Ale jo, čekaj, jo, šel jsem. Pade sama, tak. All right, Nighthawk attacks. There's the pulse. <laughs> I think he's going to do it. <laughs> Absolutely. Tracks his fetch land for a forest. I think when they were designing Center Car, they thought spreading seeds would be a <laughs> commonly played constructed card. I'm going to guess no. I mean, this is a card that's existed in, in sets in some form or another. Virtually yeah, but never, every... never quite too many cantrip, right? It's usually you're down a card for doing it. Sure. Or, I mean, the best one previously, yeah, there's the pulse on there's spreading seas. There's the pulse seas. on spreading seas. The, Klauser should counter this if he can. I'm right? sure he's considering it. I would totally count it. He has this. a double negative. I don't know if he wants to use it here. What, he wants to wait and just counter the red spells? Like, it's so or much better for counter, him. counter the Blood Braid Elf and the card you. Nope, he, he's going to... Yeah, no, I would totally oh, counter this. What an amazing exchange this of cards crazy. over a spreading seas. <laughs> Lingering Mirage is probably the best version of that card that has existed before, which was essentially turn it into an island with cycling. Which oh, was particularly yeah. relevant back, it was in the, the Saga block where the Talarian Academy decks were all the rage, so well, you know, right. Fluctuator it. decks needed the Lingering Mirage in order to turn off a, an opponent's academy. But even that, I think, only, got, only saw that, play in the Fluctuator play, Was deck. that also played in Rome? Uh, I think it was in a later set. Oh, it was in, too bad. It wasn't in, it <laughs> wasn't in the first, first set of the block. It wasn't in Saga, I think it was in Legacy. So Johnny Vengeance comes down and uh, taps the Nighthawk. Says, please do not untap and attack me. I might be wrong. I think it was in Legacy. It's draining my knowledge. I certainly have no memory of having it happen to me in Rome. I was playing the last time we were in Rome with an Academy deck. So. <laughs> that was also extended, so I mean, stuff like Wasteland. Sure. Seemed a little better. It was block constructed where it showed up in Fluctuator. Anyway, yeah, enough about turning lands into islands. <laughs> yeah, Klaus, this game is going great for Klauser. He's got a Johnny locking down the Nighthawk. He's got Spreading Seas turning off the red mana. Tong Wu just looks at a hand that does nothing. Klauser's hand, he's full of answers. He's got the Sphinx. He's got a couple of Bolts. He's got a Day of Judgment. He's got Essence Scatter. One, two, three, four. He next turn could tap out for Sphinx if he wants to. He's, he's in a position where he can probably sit behind a Johnny Vengeance until his opponent does anything and just blow up all the lands. It's true. There's no threat forthcoming. I might, I might go ahead and... I mean, his only permission is an Essence Scatter. He's got a couple of bolts. It's got to be tempting to just play Sphinx. Like, what goes wrong if he taps out for Sphinx? He gets Blightning? That's not the end of the world. He's got a spreading season on the land here. Oh, so you draw another spreading seas? Wow. All right. Yes, drawing another spreading seas clearly better than playing Sphinx of Jawar Isle. <laughs> can hear the other announcers. Apparently, spreading seas is pronounced exactly the same way in Italian. It's pronounced spreading seas. Maybe an extra syllable at the end. <laughs> Did he, forget the, okay, did, he, um, yeah. did he forget the lock on the Nighthawk? How is the Nighthawk untapped? Yeah, okay. Contra. Yeah, we're two turns away from a one-sided Armageddon here. Yeah, we are. So the way to six. beat Jund. I mean, this is. I mean, a lot of people who've been frustrated and losing to the Jund deck. Here you go. Here's a clinic and what you can do to it. <laughs> like attack the mana. That's the weak link. <laughs> Yet another turn one uh, Blood Moon effect from the Austrian Bernard Lahner. 
This time it's Magus to the moon. So he has shut down his mana and has a threat. Yep. That is seven counters. Yeah, That's second Armageddon. die for a Johnny. Next turn. Locks down the Nighthawk. Make sure he knows he moves <laughs> Johnny into the red zone to make sure he's like, yeah, see, it's, yeah, a little it's tapped. Last turn, apparently. I guess tapping he, out for Sphinx right before one-sided Armageddon? I don't know about that. Does he all right, Clouser is down a game here, so all this does is even this, potentially. The Austrians are in game three in extended, and they've got a quick blood moon. The Austrians are in game two in legacy, and they're up a game. So China took the early lead, but the Austrians are poised. Looks like a Wake Thrasher Regery is beating down. Say that again? Yeah. Oh, here comes yep, there's Sphinx, Sphinx of Dwar Isle. Yeah, it looks right. I don't think it, you need to leave mana up. Nothing can go really go wrong here. A land. Malakir Look Blood at that. Witch. Some red mana. Still no green, but he does now have it's red. Lightning you, and then, uh, yep. Blight redirect three to the Ajani. Sure. So red mana just in time to prevent the Armageddon. But Tong Wu is still facing down a Sphinx. And Benedict has to decide which two cards he wants to discard here. He's got some pretty good ones. Yeah, his hand is Bolt, Bolt, Day of Reckoning, Essence Scatter, and is that another Spreading Seas? It looks like it is. So of course you keep the Spreading Seas. That's easy. Yeah, it looks like he's lining up Bolt Wrath, which seems right. He's, I mean, he's got the Sphinx. He's not interested in Wrathing. He's got the Essence Scatter so he can stop any creatures. So Johnny's not going to be Armageddoning anytime soon. Oh, interesting. So he uses the lightning bolt of the Nighthawk, freeing a Johnny up to lock down mana. Sphinx attacks. Yeah, here's another spreading seas. Turning off the red mana. Tong Wu's Jun deck has swamp, swamp, island, island, island. And now Johnny's locking down a swamp. So you basically have a swamp and colorless mana. A swamp mana. and three colorless mana available to Tong Wu. Good luck. Oh, and there's a 5-5 five, five untargetable on the other side, and the control player's got a bunch of untapped mana. Good luck. Oh, pass to Exile in the extended match. So Zhang Xiang manages to get rid of that Magus. White mana off a of Chrome Mox, presumably. Over in the Legacy, meanwhile, there's a Wake Thrasher going large and attacking. Alongside a Regery and a Lord of Atlantis. Yeah, the fish deck has uh, managed to prevent Ad Nauseam from stitching anything together. And is definitely on the attack now. Which, I mean, every damage you do there is pretty relevant because Ad Nauseam kind of need, you know, you want to pay 5 or 10 life. And in standard, Clouds are trying to even things up. His plan has been to attack the Jund mana base, and his plan has been working. The Spreading Seas are in from the sideboard, for the record. Four Spreading Seas in the board. And this is the matchup you want him in. Did he bolt him there? Was it Johnny? Did he... Uh, is Johnny going going to the face? Is that what's happening now? Makes sense. Tongwu down to six, yep. so he's dead next turn. Dead next turn. 
draws a swamp. Just what he needed. So here's Blood Witch. Like it's going to get Essence scattered. Presumably. Yeah. Essence scattered the Blood Witch. I think Johnny's got enough counters on it to go again. Looks right? like it still has three. Yep. All right. There you go. Ben Clouser evens things at a game apiece. All right. Two matches are even, and Austria's up a game in Legacy. I think we'll go to table C. Let's check in on that extended match and see how that's going. Oh, meddling mage. Meddling mage for Zhang Jiang. Do we know what it's naming? I bet we can figure it out. Probably de oh, It's Blood naming Moon. Blood Moon. Not Demigod of Revenge. So it sounds like there was no Chromox involved in killing the Mages of the Moon. It sounds like a floating mana in response. Oh, he was able to float one as a response to the Magus. All right, well, the Merfolk got the job done. The fish deck from Lee Bo forces game three in Legacy. So. Everybody's going to game three. Now it's best two out of three games instead of best two out of three matches. Everybody's going to game three. The one match that's underway right now is this one between Zhang Ziyang and Bernard Lehner. It's extended. You're looking at Bernard right now. Bernard is running uh, all in red deck and has not really managed to get any serious action going. So. Zhang Jiang's Tesserator, I would think, has the advantage now. Engineered explosives for zero. Cool. Thinking about taking out some moxes. Sure. Also, the ability to take out some tokens. Should he empty the orange? I'm assuming he's playing empty the orange, yes. Meddling Mage is locking out Blood Moon. Jang goes ahead and he pops the explosives to nail those Chrome Moxes. What's the what's the threat set in uh, Laner's deck? He has a Demigod of Revenge, Deus of Calamity. Those are both fives, right? Yes. So the Mox is not super relevant. He's still got five mountains. Seems like the, yeah, it seems like the engineered explosives oh, has a potential <coughs> answer to empty the Warrens, which is also in the threat set. Sure. Cool. Is a little better on the board there. Meddling Mage continues attacking. 16 apiece. I think he's got another explosives in hand, which helps. What are the white cards? Those That's what I thought from the art. There are manatides. He's running three manatides. I think that's what he's got. Oh, now blowing the chrome boxes up makes a ton of sense. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Xiang Zhang from China is two steps ahead of us. Blowing up those chrome boxes sets up a potential manatide on a day. You could see his own hand. Yeah, that helps. Probably. But yeah, he's set up to potentially manatide and spike away either Deus or Demigod. So now there's Thopter there. Foundry. Okay. Zero. And there's the explosives for zero again. Does he get a mana leak as well? Yeah, things looking very good for China, trying to put a match win up on the board. Unable to get much of anything going. Meddling Mage Beatdown is not really the way Zhang's planning to win with this Tesserator deck, but 
Hey, whatever works. Seething song, okay. Five playing around the mana tides. Well, he know, I'm sure he knows there's both mana leaks and mana tides in his opponent's deck, so even if he doesn't know they're in hand, he knows they exist. What's he planning? Let's get a Magus, some mountains. What's on the left side? Is that a Deus? Yeah, leak tithe tides. It's be hard to get anything through that. He just let Seething Song resolve, right? Yeah, I think you just let that resolve. So that's five. Or is he just playing mages with them in here? Oh. <coughs> that Zendikar basic lands looks so good. 